Hi GP Learners, in this episode I'm going to show you how to schedule a Zoom meeting using your mobile phone, which I tend to find is the most effective way of doing so. It's important to make sure you've got the Zoom app downloaded and registered already. And when you do so, just tap on the app. When it opens, it'll take you to the main screen, and from here you can either schedule a meeting or go to your existing meetings by tapping on the meetings button. As you can see, I don't have any scheduled at this moment in time. If you wanted to quick start a meeting and you've got a personal meeting room, just click on start and then send the information to do so. However, this is about scheduling meeting, so click on schedule. When you do so, you can see the layout that I've got here. This has various different options, such as naming the meeting room, setting the date, setting the start and finish time, setting the time zones, setting if you want this meeting to repeat, using your personal meeting ID if needed, as well as the option of having a password. It's important to note that at present, Zoom have now made this mandatory, but you can change the password that they give you. There's also then the meeting options, which we'll come to in a second. But let's schedule a meeting. So first off, it's important to name the meeting. So for this purpose, let's just make, name it Meeting Test 1. Next, you can set the date. So if we schedule this for tomorrow, so that's going to be Monday the 6th of April, and set. Next, you can set the start time of the meeting. And the reason why I recommend using a mobile phone is you can specifically set the start and end time for meetings, which can be useful. So for example, if I wanted to, I can set the meeting to start at 10 minutes past 7. As you can see, when you use the website interface, it only allows you to do this in increments of 15 minutes. This may or may not be a big thing, but sometimes it can be relevant. It is important to try and set the meeting times to start and finish at the times you would expect, mainly because if you have the personal account, you can only host one meeting at a time. However, it is important to remember that Zoom will let you go over your meeting times as long as you have the paid account. If you have the free account, you are limited to a maximum of 40 minutes for more than two people, at which point Zoom will kick you off. You can also set the time zones if this is relevant for international meetings, and set the repeat. So if I was to tap on this, it gives you the options of daily, weekly, every two weeks, monthly, or every year. And you can use this as needed. You can use your personal meeting room if needed, and this is useful if you want to have the same web link for the meeting room. This can be relevant if you have regular meetings with certain people. As I mentioned earlier, Zoom has now made passwords mandatory for all meeting rooms, and as a result, you can now change the password to whatever you want. So for example, I can add a 7-8 in there to make it even more secure. Next up are the meeting options. Here, you can set the host and participant videos to start at the moment you join the meeting, and you can set the audio options, such as using either device audio, telephone audio, both. I tend to recommend having both. If you are based out of the United States, it's worth also adding in your dialing country or region, because then when you get the meeting invitation, you also get the relevant dialing codes. Let's go back now. As you can see, there are the advanced options as well, and I would recommend using these. By tapping on it, it expands to give you five extra options. Enable waiting room, allow join before host, allow join meeting, automatically record the meeting, and alternative hosts. Enable waiting room just allows a holding area for people to talk in before you start the actual meeting. This can be useful if you need to. I tend not to use that. What I do recommend using is allow join before host. This is simply that other participants can start chatting before you join the meeting as the host, which can be relevant if you're running behind. The allow join meeting is an option of whether you want everybody or only authenticated users. I tend to recommend everyone just because then that prevents people from saying they can't get into the meeting. Automatically record the meeting is an option if you need it. I tend not to use this and only click record when relevant. However, if you do click on this, it gives you the option of either recording in the cloud or on the computer. I must admit, I tend to recommend using the computer because the amount of storage you get on the cloud is fairly limited. This is one of the key reasons why you should also name your meetings because it will give you a different file name for each meeting. And this makes the retrieval a lot easier. If you have an account with multiple hosts, you can then select an alternative host if this is relevant. The final option is whether or not you want to add this meeting automatically to your calendar once it's been made. I tend to do this because it makes my life a lot easier. So, our meeting's all set and scheduled. Let's click on Done. As you can see, I can invite attendees by various different options. However, I could just start the meeting, add it to my calendar, or directly add invitees. And if I was to click on that, it gives me various options whichever exists on my phone. Annoyingly, WhatsApp doesn't get included in this. However, you could send this through other routes by copying and paste. 
you could delete the meeting if needed. I tend to add it to my calendar and then just make sure I don't forget it. And that is how you schedule a meeting on Zoom using a mobile phone. I hope you found this useful. As always, if you've got any comments or questions, feel free to contact me on whichever social media platform you prefer, at EGP Learning or at Gandalf 52 If you are listening on a podcast, make sure you leave us a review, especially on iTunes. It's really helpful. And as always, if you're watching on YouTube, make sure you click the bell and subscribe to get notified of all of our content and leave a comment. I guarantee you reply. And as always, EGP Learning is here to help save you and your patient's time by tech enhancing your primary care and learning. Catch you in the next episode.